The Oilers fall to 0-2 on this four-game Eastern Conference road trip in a 5-3 loss to the Florida Panthers. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Oil Stream post-game show here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Tom Gazzola and YouTube Trev with you. Matt Cassian, our game analyst, will be joining us shortly as Edmonton is now 5-11-1 on the season. And this one is going, going Almost gone. Uh, sad to say, on November 20th, just 17 games into the 2023-2024 NHL regular season in oil country. You can join the conversation at 780-218-9999. If you want to text us and you're listening via the TuneIn app, or if you're on our audio stream, big thank you. And that's how you can get a hold of us. I'll read as many texts as possible tonight. And then if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel, thank you as well. Get into the nasty chat. Watch the expletives. Kids might be on there. Let's behave ourselves. But by all means, uh, have your say. Because uh, that was another one where you go, what the hell did they just do tonight? Uh, don't get me wrong. The Florida Panthers are a very good team. They improved to 7-1 and one on home ice at Amarant Arena. And the Oilers continue to have their struggles. Uh, so the better team won. However, the Oilers did have their opportunities and blew them, as they tend to do this part in the season. Let's welcome in our game analyst and former NHLer Matt Cassian. Cass, I'm going to go through the scoring summary. And uh, I, I will say that uh, our EST group chat was pretty good tonight. And uh, we can't share a lot of what was said in that group chat tonight. Your <laughs> gift that you created was hilarious. That shall it's remain accurate. between us. So we'll describe it. We'll we describe will describe it. it. Quite accurate. Quite accurate. Okay, here's what happened. As things started out really good for the Oilers, they actually came out with some gusto. The first period has been their best period this year. Second and third, absolute disasters. We all know that. It's well documented. But in that first period, the Oilers do get the lead. Connor McDavid on a really nice goal from a, a bad angle. The Leon Dreisaitl, uh, low percentage angle where Dreisaitl tends to score. Not this year, though, but McDavid uh, putting it home from uh, an angle close to the goal line, his fifth of the year from Dreisaitl and Bouchard. one nothing at 5.59. The good times roll for the Oilers as Evander Kane snaps home his eighth of the year on a nice feed from Derek Ryan. Ryan McLeod, good to see him chipping in offensively. The secondary assist, that goal at the nine-minute mark. Two-zip oil. That lasted all of a minute and 36 seconds because Connor Verhage, or Carter Verhage, I should say, gets his eighth from Reinhardt on the power play. So much time for Verhage to step into that shot from the slot. Uh, I don't know what Darnell Nurse was doing. I don't know if he was trying to avoid or take away the passing lane for a one-timer, but he kind of stuck down low. A couple of guys got sucked over on the PK, so 2-1. The Oilers continued to lead at that point, but again, it didn't last very long because, of course, Nico Mikola gets his second goal of the year from Kevin Stenland, who had himself a night. If you're saying, who the hell's that? I don't blame you. Uh, Mikola second at 15.53 would make it 2-2 going into the middle frame. And then Connor McDavid on the penalty shot at the five-minute mark. An absolutely business-like penalty shot goal after crashing hard and being taken hard into the boards on a partial break. Makes it 3-2. That one lasted, that lead lasted all of a minute and eight seconds because, of course, Nico Mikola gets his second of the night, third of the year. Um... Evander Kane, you know, on the back check, tried to help Calvin Pickard out, and he inadvertently knocks it into the net past Pickard to make it 3-3. Florida would not look back because they would add another Kevin Stenland, his fifth of the season, from Louis Dorinen for three Panthers at 13-42. Uh, a lot of wide turns and not really engaging in front of the Oilers' net on that Stenland goal. And uh, Cass will break that one down for us in a little bit. And uh, then Sam, Sam Bennett gets his first goal of the year. He's been injured for a good chunk of the season. Into the empty net from Stenland and Forsling to make it 5-3 at 19-17. Shots on goal, 33-31 in favor of the Florida Panthers. They also win the faceoff battle, 57.7% to 42.3. The power play for the Oilers, 
0 for 3. Had their chances, but still go over yet again. This is becoming a big concern. The PK, as it tends to do, gives at least one up tonight, going three for four. Hits 22-17 in favor of the Panthers in what ended up being a pretty chippy game. I didn't mind the emotion and the physicality. Block shots 17-14 in favor of the Oilers. Matt Cassian, what are your initial thoughts and some of your takeaways from the 5-3 Oilers loss to the Florida Panthers? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's more of the same, Tom. You put yourself in a great position off the start. You score a couple goals, have all the mo. Um, as much as I've liked Evander Kane's games, uh, I've liked the way he's played. He's been one of the, the better Oilers. He's brought a lot of energy. He's actually been around the net. He's scored some goals. He's contributed. He's been he's been good. Can't take that penalty. No. Can't take that penalty. Um, it wasn't a hockey penalty. It wasn't on a play in front of the net. You weren't saving a goal. It wasn't like a, you, you know, you just hit a guy too hard. It was a bad penalty to take. Yeah. Uh, getting your hands up on a guy. And that uh, lets Florida right back into it. And they just kind of took over the momentum after that. And, you know, the, the, there, there's some, some tough bounces tonight. And I, I get that, that there were some tough bounces, you, you know, the, the bounce uh, inadvertently putting into your own net and then, uh, uh, you know, Broberg stepping on a stick, uh, backing up. Those oh, were yeah. those were tough bounces, tough bounces. But end of the day, your power play still went over. Couldn't get the job done. And uh, you made big, big mistakes again. And it's sometimes tire fires, as I sent in my uh, lovely little gif. <laughs> Uh, to, it was good. To the EST crew. Yep. Um, of uh, of Broberg doing a little power circle. Uh, up two and down power from one circles. Knee, two two power circles. Yeah, full yep. dude, two full power circles. Wide. In a span of about two seconds. When yep. all he needed to do was stop. All he needed to do was stop. Needed to stop in front of the net. I mean, he would have had that first bounce there. He would have been able to get a stick on it, poke it to the wall. No issue. Mm -hmm. um, or he would have been able to take a body, no issue, but instead was just like spinning, looking, trying to find. And that's kind of, you know, sums up a little bit of the game is you were in it, you were almost in position, and then you just decided to spin around a couple of times trying to find whatever the heck was going on. And, uh, you know, it's in the back of your net and the game's over. Before the Bouchard onslaught inevitably begins via the nasty chat as well as the text line, I will say this. Yes, he had mistakes. Yes, he took those two wide turns, power turns, as Cass described them as. Um, other defensemen had some some bad plays tonight. There was yep. I, there was an Eck home play where I looked at yep, YouTube, Trev. Wall, just just yep. threw it up the wall. Yep, that wasn't yep. good. Ended up in the back of your net. Yep, that wasn't good. I mean, Nurse got Broberg. caught flat-footed. Broberg, yeah. Yep. So, Nurse on the other one, flat-footed. Yeah. Kind of kind of caught him. I, I would say Nurse was like caught in between. Like you're, you're yes. caught in between yeah. that's in that one where it's like you, you, you were neither here nor there and you needed to be one or the other. Yeah. And, and in that, to, to me, the higher danger was in front of you in that play and, and should have taken another step forward. Um, just even from a stick standpoint to get a stick out in mm -hmm. front of there, try to get a stick in the shooting lane, go stick on puck. Um, but yeah, I mean, flat footed. I just wanted so, to, you know, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't just Bouchard. Yeah. It wasn't just him, yeah. but that just, I mean, if, if I'm just going to summarize the game, I was going to summarize the game. That Bouchard play summarizes the game. Yeah, <laughs> and there was two other people in front, and I'm not even sure right now who those other two were. I can and look. Where, where I think I think you know Sean Bell, uh, sometimes analyst on this show and co-host for Tom Gazzola. Yes. On on uh, on Saturday mornings. Hello hockey. Hello. On hockey. hello hockey. Hello hockey. That's right. Um, as he lovely pointed out, is that uh, yes, there were scrums. But the Oilers got a little pushed around tonight, physically, I would think. Did they engage in the scrums? For sure. Did they get pushed around physically? Absolutely. And if you look on that play, too, you know, while Bouchard's doing the circle, you have two other guys, and no one touches anybody in front of the net. Connor Brown is one, and I believe that's Brett Kulak, the other. Nobody touches anybody. And, that, again, that whole play just kind of summarizes a tire fire of everyone spinning around, turning, no one hitting anyone, no nope. one grabbing anyone, no one getting a stick, and... Just mass confusion. Mass confusion. So. Not good. Yep. Five to three. The Oilers fall to the Florida Panthers. 780-218-9999 if you want to get into the text line. And then a Nasty Chat is humming away as it tends to do after a loss like this. I'm just going to confirm on that Stenlin goal. It was 
indeed, uh, Kulak, Brown, and Bouchard that uh, were in front of the Oilers' net and didn't touch a single Panther. So confirmed, Cass, confirmed. All right, let's there start things off. Yeah, uh, out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Piss Jug, old PJ, Pat Janix. Good to hear from PJ, uh, devout EST listener, and we appreciate that, PJ, who says, Bouchard, what the F are you doing? Get the puck in deep. You have to score. He's got to sit now for a game. But, yeah, goaltending again. Time for Holland to overpay for a goalie. He needs a goalie to make that save. Uh, Calvin Pickard tonight, Cass, impressions? Yeah, not great. Um, also, hello, BJ. It was good to see you a couple weeks uh, ago. Yes, you sent me the yeah. photo. Sent, sent the photo. We got photo proof. Um, so good to see you. And um, good to, I guess, hear from you now, firing one in. Um, yeah, but I didn't love that Bouchard, the goal that we are talking about. I yeah. mean, he he gets caught a little bit out of position on that one as well. Um, very average. Very average. A I mean, team didn't help. <laughs> so It did not. We didn't, we, we, we didn't get that, uh, you know, we have our backup in bump that we were hoping for. <laughs> um, Everything's a bump you, now. <laughs> yeah, everything. Did you... Did you I mean, I don't, I wasn't expecting him to be lights out. I know some no. people thought he was going to be lights out coming in. I don't think he was lights out. I don't think he was bad. He was okay. Made some good saves. He was okay. Yeah, he was okay. As yeah. YouTube Trev chimes in via the nasty chat and says, drop a like, everyone. Show the boys some love. I agree. Yeah. Smash that subscribe button, as they say well on the YouTubes. Um, I'm looking at YouTube Trev and observing him. He's been smiling from ear to ear most of the day and now he's got like this uh, scowl on his face not in a good place right now so uh youtube trev we'll have to get him a libation you'll be okay buddy yeah. he's we'll get not happy it. he's not we'll happy get through it we'll get through it uh we've been here before pal uh cb radio guy says guys i am honestly scared dry leaves next year this text coming in with no name on it just says this team sucks norm in a combine hello norm Norm says, well, gents, at least they are consistent with their play. It's also allowing me to bet against them and make some cash. Don't tell my wife. Have a great show, guys. Norm in a combine. Norm, good to hear from you. Taco. Taco chimes in via the text line, 780-218-9999. Hey, boys, let's never forget that Sam Bennett couldn't do a single pull-up at the NHL combine. We need as many people to know this and to keep this fact alive. P.S. Pickard looked decent and gave the Oil a chance to make a comeback in the third. We need better defense. Thank you, Taco, for the text. Always appreciate it. Uh, Spruce Grove Corey. Hey, Spruce Grove Corey. Good to hear from you. He texts in and says, I wonder, would the team have turned it around under Woodcroft because the knoblock thing doesn't seem to have made a difference? Cass, we know Chris Knobloch is uh, calm, very composed, um, I think back to his second game behind the bench last week, and he did make some comments even after that win over Seattle in regard to alarming issues involving his team, especially in the defensive zone. He was... He was... He was good about it. He wasn't too overly beat up about it that night because they won in dramatic fashion. But the like there was an urgency that night when he brought it up. But I think he's dropped a couple of comments in regard to the defensive zone, and he's getting it. And I, I still look at him, and I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a smart coach. And I go, if I'm Chris Knobloch, and I've inherited this disaster of a team that's supposed to be a cup contender, like what do I even do? What experience do I draw on to somehow get helicoptered in here and make a real difference. How do how do I engage these guys and get their attention and motivate them? How? Because this is a absolute crap situation. Of course he's not going to say no to a head coaching job in a city he's very familiar with, but I I look at him and I go, "What what can you do?" And he's trying to assess this stuff all on on the fly, it feels like, Cass. Is that a, a fair read, or, or how do you see it? Yeah, well, you're trying to assess on the fly. And again, and we've, we've talked about this before, where this isn't this isn't like you have a preseason to run into this thing. 
and to work work on things and to evaluate and to work through it's like you're doing this on the fly and these games matter and these points matter and and uh, you know at the end of the day tom it still wasn't jay woodcroft's fault that this team wasn't playing well right and so so it wasn't like it was you were in my opinion anyways like you were having horrendous horrible coaching and that that was going to be the answer to all of a sudden fix everything i mean this wasn't this wasn't, you know, you were playing with filthy Bruce as a coach and he doesn't have a defensive zone system or is right. trying to play man on man. Like this is, you can, you can tweak things. You can work with players on things, but, but you have to do it on the fly. And, and that's very difficult to do. And some of what he wants could take time. Some of what he wants could take time. Yeah. And do the Oilers have time for it to have an impact this season? I don't know. I don't know. I was hoping so, as was everybody else. You know, we've seen flashes of play. I mean, just look at the start of this game. You had some great play at the start of the game. You controlled yep. the start of the game. You scored the first two goals at the start of this game. And then you just made mistakes, and you made some more, and you made some more. And and where there are some unfortunate bounces along the way, yep. But, I mean, for him, I mean, he's got to be looking at this and going like, what can I do? I change where guys were sitting in the dressing room. I've already, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change small things that I can, but if the team just doesn't do what you're asking, implement, implement what you're asking. What, what can you do, Tom? I, I don't know. That's why I ask that when I see him, when, when I've engaged with him and, press conferences and scrums and all that and you try to get a read and and he's he's stoic and uh that's part of his demeanor and I don't think he wants to reveal too much but at the same time it's like I think he's trying to figure out what the hell he's dealing with still yep it's only and been is, a week is my a it, it, yeah it is uh my uh, my good friend Josh otherwise known as toxic Texan on the nasty chat ah, says yes. this coach is really just Jay Woodcroft the sequel um, which I don't know if it's if quite like that, but I mean, there's actually a lot of similarities, at least in the way their demeanor, I would say their general demeanor in the way that they try to handle the press and, um, you know, be pretty stoic and, and tight lipped in what they're saying. And so, yeah, I mean, Tom, there's just, there's just not much, there's not much you can change that as we've said from the start of the season, the solution is not a different coaching staff. Yeah. The solution is not a different GM. The solution has to be inside of that dressing room, and we're just not getting that right now. Everything that you expect to be clicking at a high level has essentially faltered this year. It's it's incredible. If you if you created a checklist of things, Cass, and, and you know what we've kind of done that in in little spurts here and there on the pre and post game shows, and we go, you know, defensive zone coverage check mark or X. Well, huge X. X, 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 X beside defensive zone coverage. Power play, which was a, a resounding success, historic last year. It's getting an X right now. It's 0 for 8 in its last two games. Power play 2 was the one that was clicking a week ago. Power play 2, which barely sees the ice. Um, you know, four check. I, what's neutral? You know, like 0.5 out of 1. Uh, goaltending X. I, it's just everything has been bad. Desperation X. You go down the list, break down a team, and there's not many check marks beside this group. You know, executives, management X, X, coaching staff X, everybody X, basically. Pre and post game show host. Super big check mark. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Calvin texts but in. Seriously. <laughs> Right, like, big check mark, big thumbs up, smash that subscribe smash button. Oh, I like it, Cass. Calvin Bess via the nasty chat says, Cass, is Leon playing with some sort of injury? Even his one timers don't look like his shots last year. Cass, what would you say to Calvin? I don't think he's injured. I I I think he is not executing. I no, mean, no and, confidence. And sometimes not like, no confidence. Gone. And sometimes when he does, like Bobrovsky makes a save on the one. And it's just going to steepen that confidence drop, right? I mean, it, 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 he's fanned on a ton where normally he doesn't fan. He, he's in the past number of years. He's been absolutely money from there, and he just can't seem to find it. Yeah. Can't seem to find it. Can't coach. You, you can't coach that. 
I mean, you can try to build up a player's confidence. You can try to tell them all the right things, but at the end of the day, Leon's got to convert on a couple of those to, to build it back up, and it's just not happening for him right now. But I don't think he's hurt, Tom. Do you? No, I don't get that sense. Um, yeah, you know, there's an article. Speck is on the road. Mark Spector from Sportsnet. He's on the road, and he talked about McDavid and Dreisaitl in his latest article. I was reading it today, and um, I get the sense that Leon's confidence is just shot. You see him on the bench. Uh, he just looks like a guy where it's not working. I, I don't think he's hurt. Cass, I mean, maybe a bump here, a bruise there, but he's usually the guy initiating the pain on the opposition. I just think he is just doesn't have the confidence. And uh, I've, I've never seen this from Leon Dreisaitl at the NHL level. Outside of his rookie year where he stayed here for, what, like 38 games? Um, and then was sent back to Kelowna. So, yeah, this is a rarity, and it's all happening at the same time for this group, and this is the result we get. 5-11-1, this team, through 17 games. Uh, this text from Eric Stewart says, let's not forget Vegas didn't even make the playoffs the year before, and then they suddenly won the Cup. There's still a chance, and then there's an uh, uh, just an abundance of laughing and clown emojis from Eric. Uh, Majd Salami says, this team is just a bunch of frauds. Uh, one asks, how has Gully survived everybody since Aikens? Gully is uh, A, good coach. B, McDavid and Drysettle really appreciate having him around. Uh, that has helped him, certainly. Uh, Pradeep says, when will Bouchard be held accountable for all his defense inadequacies, zero situational awareness, and effort? We saw the bench get shortened tonight, Cass. <laughs> Uh, but it was Vinny DeHarnay, and I believe Evander Kane even sat a few shifts earlier in the game and then took a 10-minute misconduct, and then on top of that bad penalty that you mentioned from earlier in the game. Yeah. Uh, what are you laughing at? What did you see? I was, I was laughing at – I was just waiting. I'm waiting for a Bouchard analytics Oh, we saw one of those earlier. I know. We see them all the time. Um I mean, Evan Bouchard makes big mistakes in the defensive zone. Yes, we, yes, yes. He just does. He does. He does. And, and I don't care what his analytics are. I know analytics help things. He does some good things in the offensive zone, did some good things in the offensive zone again tonight. Um, I think he had a good solid pinch that led to one of the Oilers goals, kept the puck in, um, was a really good play. Uh, but in defensive zone, he, the, his patience, and his lackadaisical nature, which serve him well in the offensive zone, sometimes go against him mm -hmm. and have him spinning circles multiple times instead of just stopping on the puck. Yeah. And um, as far as the bench shortening goals, yeah, yeah, you had some guys the bench shortened a little bit, um, and you run into the problem that Jay Woodcroft ran into, and he kind of <laughs> addressed this in one of his post game press conferences right before he got fired. Was like, well, you also need to score goals. And Evan Bouchard helps you score goals, and mm -hmm. so it's really hard to shorten the bench when, when you know you're sitting your best players or or the players that give you the best opportunity at scoring goals. So, yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a tough situation. It's tough to know how to hold players accountable, and and maybe tonight was the start of that for Knobloch, where where he sat some guys yep. for some shift. Maybe he's going to do more of that going forward. We'll have to see. Um, but you can't really sit dry sidle. And if you do, that's not going to help his confidence. No, can't no. really sit David. Like there's, there's guys that, that haven't been at the level you've needed them at and sitting them does nothing. And so what are you going to do? Options are limited. The Oilers fall 5-3 to three to the Florida Panthers, 0-2 on this Eastern Conference road trip. It continues Wednesday night against the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, we will have the uh, oil stream pre- and post-game show live on location, Kingsway Boston Pizza. Come hang out with the crew. We'll be on location. Cass, if you can make it out, I know you're a busy man, but uh, you'll be on the show that night. And uh, if you're down on location, fantastic. The more the merrier. And maybe uh, good vibes in BP's. Kingsway helps the team get some success on the ice. 
put all that positive vibes into the uh, universe, and who knows, maybe a a solid performance could lead to a victory from all that good manifestation. Uh, we shall see. Let's go to the inbox, 780-218-9999. Also, the nasty chat. I tried to click it to the nasty chat, and it was just like, bam, 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 bam. Uh, so keep that coming. And uh, like YouTube Trev and Cass said, smash that thumbs up, please. And thank you, all of you watching. We appreciate it. All of you listening, also really appreciate it. This text comes in, says, Bouchard's lack of effort, keeping pucks in on the power play and with the extra skater is killing this team. Ah, yes, uh, that among many other things. And yes, there are other guilty parties for sure, Texter. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, this one says, 21 19 3. We were shortly after Christmas. What's the legitimacy of at least matching that? Cast with the way it's going, a 21-19-3 record by this Christmas, I think is a long shot now. At five, That's going to be pretty tough. Yeah. And you got to you gotta turn it around real quick if you want to get there. And, and really, realist, not, I don't want to say realistically, but Tom, if they get there, they've been playing some pretty good hockey. And that's kind of like, <laughs> that's what we hope for. Like, I will be ecstatic with the rest of the run if they can get to 500. If they can get to 500 by Christmas, they they, they have been certainly playing much, much better and much, much more consistent than they have right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be that's going to be a tough one. Um, this text in on the nasty chat from Tyson and Tara. Um, I don't know if it's Tyson or Tara, so I'm just going to say Tyson and Tara. Okay. I don't know which one of you is texting it. Maybe both. But uh, Maybe both. Maybe you're both sitting there. Actually, I'm going to assume you're both sitting there. So if you can smash that like button twice, smash it twice. Um, actually, that might take the thumbs up off it. So just hit it once if you have it, Tyson <laughs> and Tara. Something has happened amongst the players in the dressing room. They don't forget to play hockey. There is a riff between the players. Possible, Tom? Yeah. I, it, I mean, being in that room for the limited time that we as the media get to be in that room. I, I don't see any indicators of it and in cast. Yeah. You're not going to see that though, but we're you, not going to see that. We step into the room for the media, for the scrums yeah. to talk to players. We're not going to see that because that, that manifests itself in the, in the day to day around the rink when the media is not there. Now I have seen it in the room. I've also traveled with the team, seen them at hotels, seen them at airports and you get a, a real good feel for the group. But uh, little things, I, I will say this, like you pick up subtle little things where you can tell that it's it's not going and there's bad juju going, if you will. Um, I'll use this as an example. When they switched the lockers around and had all the defense move to one side beside each other and the forwards on their own side, um, there was like five defensemen just hanging out, having a good time. And usually you don't even see that, Cass. And I think that was a sign that, you know, there's still some positivity uh, everyone was getting along, but I, losing creates cracks and fissures, right? Yep, that's that's that comment is absolutely fair yeah. because it does. Yeah, it does, and it, it can widen things that normally would get swept under the rug and yeah. not cared about. Yes. So, um, it, you know what? When we get into the room, when the team comes back next week, it might be a different story. It might be negative. It could it could very well be the opposite of what we saw last week. But uh, up until that point, it seemed like things were generally okay. We shall see. Uh, Brad from Crossfield, Texas says, Boys, I got to say this, and normally I'm a positive guy, but Bouchard is a complete traffic pylon out there. I played and coached at a high enough level to know if you play like he did on that fourth goal, you don't see another shift. How does he continue to get put out there, especially with 7D man? He's a complete plug right now. That's from Brad from Crossfield. Cass, I think you kind of you hit on that. You need offense. He provides offense, and it's a high risk, high reward situation. And the risk has completely outweighed the reward so far this season. Well, Although, he's he's still got seventeen points. He does on the year. He does. He's a, he's a point of game player right now, so he he produces offense, and 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 that's why you haven't seen him sit is because you're chasing games, and when you're always chasing games, you have to put the offensive guys out there. Mm-hmm. Now, again, maybe that changes. Maybe Knobloch locks it down a little bit more and sits people down a little bit more, um, as we chatted about a little bit already. But it's it's hard. It's difficult to make that decision as a coach to say that I'm going to give my team less of a chance here to score a goal when we need a goal because because of this. I mean, it's it's just 
it's it's difficult to do that. Shanzi chimes in. Shanzi says, "Oh boy, what's the answer here for the Oilers? Goaltending, defense, more depth scoring. You fire the coach, more of the same blunders. Fire Holland, redundant." So what's the answer? Seems like the Oilers might be playing golf sooner than later. Hashtag disappointing from Shanzi. And uh, you know what, Shanzi? If they were in town, they could still play golf here. Because there's one course that's open and people have been playing lately. Uh, All right. We do have audio and video coming up. YouTube Trev's working on it. I saw McDavid. He says, give me a couple minutes. We will do that. So we'll get to a couple of these. I'll float these to Cass, see what he thinks. Uh, Cass, would love to know what value do you think Bouchard has league-wide if this team even wanted to trade him? What would you say to that? We can probably get something for him. Yeah. I mean, it's still a young player, not overly expensive. Point-a-game player right now. So if you're looking to trade somebody, he's got trade value. Um, but just like with Bouchard, just like with anybody on the Oilers, is you have to make a trade to get better. And is is trading Bouchard going to make you a better team in this moment? Yeah. I I don't know that it does. And again, if all fairness to Evan Bouchard, he does some really good things offensively. Really good yes. things offensively. Yes. They generate solid offense in the offensive zone. It's his big defensive blunders and and big mistakes in the defensive zone that have come back to bite them and and that have just haunted him, absolutely haunted him this year, and and I just I don't know Tom that that trading him, you know we could we could start to speculate about who you could get for him and what that would look like, but sure. I don't know if you're getting any better. Yeah, I don't know if you're getting any better. Well, and you're trading from a position of weakness too, so teams yep. are salivating. And, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Dan chimes in. Fat Dan says, yes, they need offense. Sure, but they need defense more. No, Fat Dan nailed it. Absolutely. I'm there with you. JB simply says, Edmonton Oilers keeping video coaches busy since 2007. (laughs) JB, good to hear from you. Uh, This one says, there is a definite rift in the room. This is why Coffee is a coach. I don't know if I believe that, Cass. I don't know if I believe that. I think putting yeah. I think putting Paul Coffey in there was kind of a desperation move, if anything. Yeah, you're trying to change something. Yeah, you're trying to change something. So they they get rid of Dave Manson on the defensive side. They get rid of Jay Woodcroft as head coach. These guys are still under contract, I believe, for another year. The rest of this year, certainly, and next year. Um, when you get fired as a coach, unless you take a job with another team, like immediately or in, even the next year, you're still getting your contract. You're still getting paid. Um, I could see Paul Coffey being slid in behind the bench as a cost-cutting measure to not have to hire another assistant coach for three or $400,000. Seriously. Like, I, I could see that being yep. part of it. Um, you have to give could be. Knobloch head coaching money, probably on the lower end because he's a, a new head coach in the NHL. Woodcroft was getting somewhere around 3 million I believe it was. Manson was getting, you know, a few hundred thousand for sure. So I, I could see part of coffee going behind the bench as a cost cutting or cost savings measure plus he's Paul Coffee for crying out loud with minimal coaching experience. I will note that. This one says, "Guys, I am too or am I too hard on Bouchard or should he have more try?" On this play and the video that was sent in, Cass, you want to take a guess what it was? Spinning around. Double power spins. I love how you called them power spins. Yeah, power turns. <laughs> power yeah. turns, yes. Uh, Janai is here. So the fans, I, I'm sadly included, wanted Pickard and Nett. Still lets in four, but I believe he should start next game. He seems solid in high-end scoring chances. Did he not? Connor McDavid looks like he's on a roll now. Dry Saddle needs to pick it up. Mr. Brown is a waste of a player, is he not? I did see McLeod play a little bit better than usual. Uh, Janai, uh, McLeod did pick up a point today. McDavid cast, if there is a, a bit of a bright spot, it does look like he's starting to get back to being the McDavid of old. Looks like he's a little healthier with some of his moves and things he's doing out there. Not fully there. Is it fair to say it looks like he's on the the up and up? I th- I think so. We've talked about that a little bit too the last number of games where it's kind of gone from 
very little of McDavid doing McDavidy things and and looking dominant to where he's been able to sustain it and do it a little bit more. So does it look like he's getting there? Yeah, he's getting there, mm-hmm. but the rest of the team hasn't got, hasn't got there around him. Nope. Um, and if they don't, I mean, it's, I mean, it helps you. I'm not going to say it doesn't help you. It helps you. Yeah. It makes you better. But you need 29. You need the other guys going too. Yep. Uh, Connor Brown, anything? A couple games back now. Anything there? Not much. No. No. Did, did you notice him today? Um, yes, because I looked for him. And when I saw him out there, he did a couple of things good, but most of it was... Uh, mediocre at best. Let's just put it that way. To put it yeah, nicely, I, I didn't. I didn't really notice him. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, Brown looks like he's buzzing. No, oh, Brown's had a bunch of chances and been around the net, and he looks like he's going to be putting one in. Yeah. I mean, it, was he there? He was. It's kind of there, but uh... his best play was a pass to James Hamlin that got broken up by the defenseman on a two-on-one. Yeah, that was it. That sums it up. All right, we'll get to this text from Big Dave, and then we'll get to some uh, player clips. Looks like. We have uh, McDavid almost ready to go here. Big Dave with this one says, Oilers should trade any bottom six forward for Nico Mikola. I'm, that's in jest. <laughs> uh, also adds, seriously, though, poor discipline. No jam on the power play and two bad luck goals. Killed it tonight. Wouldn't be a big deal if this team wasn't a dumpster fire right now. And, hey, boys, did we talk about Vincent's fight? Was the longest tilt I've seen in some time. I like that tonight, though. Don't see him do that Enough, and I feel he should be. Thought it gave the team a little jam from Big Dave Cass as one who's well-versed in fisticuffs and trying to create momentum for your team when things aren't going your way. Uh, the, the fight that DeHarnay had tonight, what'd you think of it? I thought it was, I thought it was, it was good. Um, I mean, it was one of those situations, though, where it was just... And I think Vinny was at the end of a shift. Like, he was pretty, he was pretty bagged by the mm-hmm. end of it, where probably would have been better for the Oilers if he would have been more dominant in the fight. Like it was just kind of a, a fairly even uh, in a situation where he was a bigger guy, bigger body, could have stretched him out a little bit more from a purely fighting technique standpoint. Didn't use his size well yeah. uh, in the fight, but but his spirit is crap, which was still fun. I mean, it's it's fun to watch. Um, I mean, at least I think so. It's barbaric. Oh, I horrible, enjoyed it. Nasty. He, he... But um but yeah, yeah, I like I like I like seeing some fights. Yes, uh, Tom. yes, it's it's good to see. He fought Jonah Gadjevich if you missed it, and uh, Vinny DeHarnay. He's six foot seven. He's a big guy. He will not shy away from dropping the gloves. He's like, I'm not even. He told me that he's like, I'm not even that tough. I'm like, dude, you pulled Arbor Jacky's shoulder out of its socket. You're tough, but uh, I don't think he sees himself as a, uh, an instigator of fights or a guy that's going to go out there looking for a cast. That's the sense I get from him. But he'll answer the, the bell when it, it comes calling, and, and he did that tonight. Yeah, and, and that's fine. Not a, not everyone need, not everyone needs to be that. I mean, when you're a guy that big and you play defense and you try to play physical, it's going to happen yeah. on occasion, and it happened tonight. Uh, um, by the way, I showed my mom asked what kind of hockey player you were when you played. So I just showed her one of your fights one. Yeah. Uh, against the Leafs. <laughs> I can't remember if it was Colton or someone else. Kyle McLaren? No. Who would it Fraser been? McLaren. Fraser McLaren. Would have been Fraser. And she's yeah. like, oh my God, that's his cuss. And I'm like, yep, don't get a match. She's like, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go into the locker room down in Florida. The Oilers fall 5 to 3 to the Florida Panthers. They blew a couple of leads. This is a storyline we've seen before. Let's hear from the captain Connor McDavid, who had a pair of goals tonight. A 2 nothing lead in the opening 9 minutes. What what do you think is misfiring in terms of holding on to that lead? Um yeah, I don't know. Um you know, the PKs obviously struggled all year. Um you know, for a number of different reasons and um you know, if we can find a way to get a kill and keep it to nothing, you know, we'll get to find our game back again. But, um, you know, the momentum seems to turn with that one. And obviously we end up uh, tied 2-2 after one. What's the hardest thing? Like, like defensively, you guys are struggling. Offensively, you, know, you got a couple tonight, but the power play struggling. Like, are you better off to try to win this thing 4-1 or try to win it 7-5? You love this question, but... Um, I've answered it so many times. We're trying to keep the puck out of our net, obviously. Um, that's our main focus, and obviously we haven't done that, again, for a number of different reasons. Um, so um, we're always trying to uh, 
defend. Um, yeah. When teams are rolling, it seems like they get the puck luck that they need. I mean, you look at the second and third goals against just unbelievably lucky plays. Is that just kind of demonstrating where this team is at right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you can call it luck, but, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, those are hockey goals and we got to find a way to score a few ourselves. Do you, do you, you know, you've got some leads. You guys have played a lot of playoff games. You've got an experienced team. Does it, does it, is it hard to figure out where the resiliency is gone? Why, you know, you can't hang on to a lead. You can't grind it well, out. There's lots of fight. You know, I don't think the resiliency is gone. I think uh, you're seeing lots of fight. Um, I thought tonight was an emotional game. Um, you know, could have gone either way again. Um, you know, obviously we find ourselves on the wrong side, and I, like everyone keeps saying, we're in the business of winning, and we got to find a way to win. All right, two goals from Connor McDavid tonight. Uh, not good enough. The team drops a 5-3 decision to the Florida Panthers. And, you know, you hear the question, are you guys trying to you know, outscore teams by uh, running it up to seven goals a night? Or are you trying to play defense? And, you know, McDavid kind of gets the, the shot in there and says, you know, you like asking this question. But it's, it's true. Like, Cass, they want to defend. They want to prevent goals, but they don't. The bottom line is they don't. As much as they intend to play defense properly, they simply don't. Yeah, they find they find ways not to. Um, they try and they find ways not to. Um, was it just me? Did he? He looked like he saw a ghost, almost or something. Like he, he looked haunted. Yeah. At the start of that, and like what, where what it was the hell just was like, he drinking there? Yeah, uh, it's like a th- thick old protein shake. Mm. Uh, someone said he's drinking sludge. 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 Um, but he genuinely looked, I don't know if horrified was the right term for it, but just like he doesn't have answers. Perturbed. Perturbed, frustrated, yeah. lost. Exasperated, um, lost. I like that Exasperated. One, That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good word for it. Um, Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think part of it, he hit the nail on the head a little bit in that the PK has struggled. And and that's yep. been an issue for some time. All season this year, um, for sure. Well, last year too. Yes, really. Yes, cleaned up last a bit year later too. in the year, but it was a disaster. For cleaned up a little bit later in the year, but not right now. Um, and really, there's there's a certain again, there's an element of truth to that. That if your PK holds, doesn't give up that goal, you stay to nothing. Yep. And you enable yourself to hold the lead better, and maybe you walk out of that period two one or two nothing still, mm-hmm. and then it's a different hockey game, as opposed to letting a team back in it before the buzzer goes uh, after round one. So, yeah, I mean, uh, a, a man certainly frustrated, um, and another one that just you, you don't have the answers, doesn't have the answers. Yeah, S- same story. I man. don't either. Yeah. Yep. Via the nasty chat. From Calvin says, Gaz, time for some Tony Robbins intervention. Worked in L.A. and his fee doesn't count against the cap. Ugh, they need some kind of jolt. Uh, all right, let's go back down to <laughs> the locker room. Who do we have next, YouTube, Trev? We've got Evan Bouchard. Okay. I'll ask you the same question I asked, Connor. You guys jump out to a 2 nothing lead in the opening nine minutes. Why do you think this team is struggling to hold on to leads? I don't know. I just think we're not... Uh playing the full 60 minutes, deviating away from uh, you know, what was making us successful in the early going. And uh, that's something that we got to figure out. Uh, your def- the defensive zone seems it's, it's a little chaotic at times, I guess. Uh, it's not settling back there. You guys are struggling. Is it, is it the same problem or is there new problems? What do you think? Um, when things aren't going your way, they aren't going your way. Uh, Right now, like I said, we got to focus on just playing the full 60 minutes. We come off to a good start, and you can't let up from there. Are you more concerned that you're having a hard, you know, the team's having a hard time keeping out of their net? Uh, or, you know, the power play, I think it was over maybe four tonight, over five the other, whatever it is, it's over eight in two games. That could have won you a couple games, too. What's the bigger problem? Um, well, I mean, I think uh, power play's got to uh, find a way to put the puck in the net. Um, not only just generate momentum, but. Uh, in a game like that, we're trying to get back into it, have a couple power plays. You really got to uh, bear down and put the puck in the net. Evan, what's it going to take for this team to recalibrate? Um, I think we got to learn from this. Um, 
go forward, watch video, but then we got to get focused for uh, next game. You can't really focus about uh, that too much, think about it too much. I think you sleep on it, learn from it, and get going to the next game. There's uh, Evan Bouchard. Eric Stewart via the Nasty Chat says, What is defense for 500? Alex, that would be the wrong guy to ask, I would say, Eric. <laughs> yep. Too harsh? And, uh, I mean, you watch watch all the video you want tom yeah. but it's like it's like you can watch a video and see the mistakes but they're just they're they're not they're big mistakes like they're 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 things that it's hard as a coaching staff to just point to the video and say see see what you did here it's it's not like hey you need to be six feet over this way i mean you're, you're gonna learn some of it a little bit but i mean i i guess i, I would have loved a follow-up question is like well what do you learn from this right you know, that's we're going to learn from this. We got to learn from this. We got to learn from this. Well, what are you going to learn from this? Uh, that to me is the real question. What will you learn from this? It, 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 are you going to learn that you hate to lose? Are you going to are you going to learn how to penalty kill better? Are you going to like what's what's the what's the learning here, Tom? And and if you learn from it, great. You don't have time to sit and learn. I mean, this isn't something where you you know you can just call up a tutor and spend some extra time studying. And it's just going to get better moving forward. Like your, your grades here as a team are at a level. If we're equivalenting, you're making this equivalent to a, a class of sorts or to a school year, your grades are at a level here where you're running out of assignments to pull your GPA enough. And, and if you, if you don't start acing these things, you're going to fail the class. Like that's, that's where you're at right now. Yes. You have a failing grade and, and yeah, you can learn some things. But you got to pull it all together now. So I mean, I, I get where you're. You're you, you maybe for Evan Bouchard, you don't have the answer in that instance, and I, I get that. But yeah, I mean, the the time just from learning from mistakes. This this it, implement the lessons. That was game ten. Yeah, that was game five. Yeah. That was game three. That was game one. Not now. Not now. You're you're like a quarter of the way through this thing almost. It's just not. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. VR Montenegro on the nasty chat says, I think they are learning that they suck. That's from <laughs> VR Montenegro. And uh, if you think that they're going to learn and implement lessons learned into their game tomorrow, that will not happen because Oilers communications declared that the team is off tomorrow. So there you go. Not skating. Uh, let's go back into the locker room and let's hear from Matthias Ekholm. As the others fall 5 3 to Florida Panthers. Your starts have been good, but you guys seem to lack the ability to grind out a lead, right? To, to make it last. What do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is. If I knew, I would obviously speak up and try to change it. But bottom line is we're, we were fine those three games that we actually won, and then. We get on the road, and, and as you're saying, like we're scoring four goals on the road to in, in Tampa, and, and, and we score enough goals here too. We just got to limit, limit the chances and, and limit the goals ultimately against. And then it just seems to be no excuses. I mean, it's on us for sure. We got to play better defense, but it's like Broby steps on a stick. I try to clear it, it hits it behind its back. It's just we just need to area. I mean, s stay on the right side, try to not, I guess, make the, the home run plays and, and always try to have a third guy back. And it's all these details and it's all these, I mean, everybody knows it. It's just right now we make a mistake defensively and it ends up in the back of our net. And that's something we need to change because right now the scoring has not been the problem. Mm -hmm. Defensive system, defensive zone play, it's, it's not, there was a time earlier this year, maybe it looked a little calmer. Doesn't look that calm right now. The guys trying to do each other's jobs, or what do you think's going on back there? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have a new coach as well, right? And he wants to implement what what he believes in, and, and we're trying to adjust. And not to to put that as an excuse, but I think it's a working progress, and it's something that when it is a working progress, maybe especially when you're saying we we've had some good starts, we've gotten up. Maybe it's time for them to go through five guys. Maybe we can area. Air on the uh, on the air of caution, right, and, and and not try to score that third one just right there, and just let it 
go five, let it go ten minutes without them getting anything, have to go through five guys of us. Obviously, they can score anyways, but right now I feel like we maybe give their give goals up a little bit too easy and they don't really have to fight and crawl back in a game. It's kind of just come right back to 2-2, two, two, right? So that's on us. That's something we need to be better at and, and, and realize as a group. Don't you think you're a goalie tonight? You know, somewhat difficult circumstances. Hasn't played in the NHL for a while, but he seemed very solid. I agree. I thought he seemed very calm back there. I th again, I think we could have played better in front of him. I think he made some really key saves in the third to keep us in the game. Um, so, yeah, nothing but praise for him. Obviously, I know it's a tough situation coming. Haven't played in, in the league for a while, and I thought he looked, uh, again, very calm. Um, did everything he could, so I uh, thought he played really well. Matthias, what's it going to take for this team to recalibrate mentally? I mean, it's it's we all see it. I think we all feel it, what, what we need to do. It's just a matter of going out and executing. And um, again, it's a work in progress. We have a lot of games left, but um, obviously the runway is, is is getting shorter and shorter every day. So um, it's, it's on us to, I mean, we are on the road right now. We will definitely have meetings and um, trying to adjust and, and, and just kind of realize that you don't have to win the game 5-1, 6-1 every night. Sometimes maybe you just have to grind out a 2 nothing early lead to, to, to just stay on top. But um, right now, um, obviously, every, it seems like every mistake goes in the back of our net. So that's something we'll, we'll have to, to bear down a little bit more on. This, I know you weren't here the whole time, but this team's won like 99 regular season games the last two years. They've played five playoff games. They've played a lot of hard, tough, grinding hockey. And it doesn't look to watch today's team that they've got any of that left. You don't see a team that grinds. You don't see a team that shuts down. You don't see a team that plays that. All the things I learned over the last two years, I don't see it. Do you? I mean, again, it's hard for me to, hard for me to compare. I can compare with the last 25 games was last year. And obviously, I thought we were um, harder to play against in those 25 games. And obviously, that showed up in the win column, too. We went... Um, we won a lot of hockey games. So, again, that's a realization we have to do as a group, knowing that it's not always about what you get, it's what you leave out there. And, and now, right now, we're leaving a little bit too much for, for my liking, for our liking, and for us as a team to get wins. And um, that's something that we uh, ultimately have to fix. Thank you. All right, so there was uh, the Viking himself, Matthias Ekholm. Uh, pretty honest, pretty upfront. There was a text that came in from Marcus the Caps fan that said, hey, boys, when will just one of these guys say, I need to be better? I think that's as close as we've gotten to that, Cass. And I thought Ekholm was pretty honest there. And, you know, he mentioned he rattled one off of Zach Hyman on a clearing attempt. Uh Broberg falls over a stick that was just dislodged. Um, did Can you appreciate some of what he said there? Was it enlightening at all, or was it more of the same? I mean, it kind of feels like the same like the same press conference we've yeah. had since game four, yes. Tommy, yes. where it's just like, I don't have the answers. We need to be better. Yeah, there were some bounces that didn't go our way, and that sucks. But we have to find ways to win hockey games, and this is a group that knows how to win, and we should know how to grind, and and all this. But you don't you don't have an answer for it. I mean, you don't, and and there's not an easy answer for it, Tom. There's not. It's it's we've said time and time and time again. The answer has to be inside the dressing room. The answer has to be from players like Matthias Ekholm, and and the challenging thing is, and I I believe him when he says, if I knew what it was, I would say something. Mm -hmm. Or try to change it. I think he's sincere That's in saying that. Absolutely sincere in saying that. Because he would. But he doesn't know what the answer is. And I don't either. All right. Well, a guy that uh, is tasked with figuring out this team and finding the answers. And he's discovering, I feel like, uh, all the woes that Jay Woodcroft and Dave Manson had to deal with is uh, Chris Knobloch. And here he is following his team's 5-3 defeat to the Florida Panthers. Um, what did you kind of uh, like about the way you got going and, and started to control the game early on? Yeah, no, I thought the execution was good. I thought we passed the puck and um, took the puck to the net. Um, the penalties kind of took away our mo momentum. They, um, you know, obviously scored a power play goal, make it 2-1 and another one. Um, but, um, you know, I think there was times where we looked like the better team and obviously they, they looked like they were better at other times. But... We just have to 
string uh, 60 minutes together. Your team has, has lost five leads in the last two games. You seem unable to defend when it comes time to defend. What, what do you think you're missing? Um, no, confidence, just playing the right way and uh, not cheating the game. Um, you know, I think we just, here we we're up two nothing. They need to open up and they need to change the way they're playing. Uh, to get some opportunities, and um, we should be able to take advantage of that. But um, unfortunately, I think we were given uh, them the opportunities. You were up two nothing. You looked like you had Florida on, a little bit on their heels. Um, you get that penalty there on Vander. Uh, did that kind of change things? Part of Verhage scores right there. Uh, absolutely, two nothing, and you know they score, and I'm sure the guys are thinking, "Oh, here we are, here we go again." But um, you know. We should have been happy with the lead, a 2-1 in that moment. And um, yeah, we just have to, whatever happens, put it behind us and uh, just worry about uh, our next shift. Chris, uh, puck luck is a very interesting thing. I mean, when you look at the second and third goals against tonight, super unlucky. What does that kind of demonstrate to you in terms of where this team is in terms of earning that puck luck? Well, yeah, you. Um, you have to do things right to get the luck, and over the course of the, um, a season or a stretch, um, hopefully it works out um, that you you get your breaks as long as you're you're working for them. And you know, I think about the night before in Tampa, um, you know, puck luck. Uh, Cody Cece rips that shot off the crossbar. And if it's an eighth of an inch lower. It's a tie game, and we have the momentum going forward. And it doesn't go in um, tonight. I think there were some opportunities where we could have scored. A, you know, I think the one that was on the goal line that kind of bounced between uh, Bobrovsky's pads didn't quite cross the goal line. Um, you know, the, uh, I think Hamlin had a really good chance there, just didn't quite go in. Uh, but um, I think we had enough chances to win. We just have to um, limit the opportunities the opposition gets. Based on the conversations with your players and yourself, it certainly doesn't come down to effort. So does frustration kind of set in when you're not getting these bounces coming your way? when it's not due to a lack of effort? Um, a little bit of frustration, but also everyone working together. Um, the effort's been great. I'm no, no, uh, no questions about that. Uh, but when you're frustrated, you often aren't thinking clearly with a clear mind, and often um, you forget an assignment or you work too hard, you over back check and you open up the slot. Um, those kind of things where we need to just step back and um, just make the right place. Okay, so there's Chris Knobloch, head coach of the Edmonton Oilers, uh, falling to 2-2 two and two as the bench boss of this team since taking over for Jay Woodcroft just over a week ago. Uh, the puck luck topic, getting some chatter in the nasty chat on the YouTube channel. Knobloch talking about Cody CC's shot hitting the crossbar an eighth of an inch the other way, and it's in. Where are you with the puck luck thing, Cass? And you know, I don't know. Is that an easy out? I'm I'm right where I always am with it, which is you got to earn it. You got to earn it. Mm-hmm. You can talk about puck luck if you are a team that's playing like 750 hockey, and you're like seven or eight or nine games over 500, and you lose a game, and it was because someone stepped on a stick. I mean, this was a, a desperate team. I mean, you, you don't, would, would you, Tom, would you talk about puck luck in the playoffs? But oh, yeah, you know, we just didn't get the puck luck we needed. Not if my team played like that. Um, no. I would say we were bad. <laughs> no. We stunk. We no. need to be better. And we we're not, we, are, we, we have not be figured better. this out. That's We had a two goal lead and we did it to ourselves. Yes. Taking penalties, not killing off penalties, letting a team back in the game. Yeah. I'd say we're in a rut and the bounces we get, we seem to be earning. And unfortunately, they're bad bounces. That's how I'd look at it. Um, Dusty, Dusty Nielsen, Texan, says, when the organization is run in a dysfunctional manner, the results will also look dysfunctional. I'm bringing the fire tomorrow. Dustin Bartholomew Nielsen, back on the Nielsen Show tomorrow morning. So that should be good, Cass. He should be bringing the heat. It seems like he's pretty fired up. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't looked at my phone. I wouldn't be surprised if he's hit up the EST uh, uh, texting group. Yep. 
But uh, yeah, sounds like Dusty's going to be bringing some fire. Yeah. Might be worth a listen. And there'll be some on the two guys in a goalie show with you and Joaquin Gage mm-hmm. along with Dusty. So mm-hmm. that'll be sprinkled in there, a smattering of fire from Dusty, yourself, and Joaquin. Looking forward to listening and watching that show tomorrow right here on EST Cast. Like I mentioned before, it was announced by Oilers PR that the team is off or the players are off tomorrow. Uh, No day to practice and regroup and learn the lessons, as Evan Bouchard described in his post-game availability. So what happens now? How do they go about trying to rectify this situation where they've now dropped two straight and are over on this Eastern Conference road trip that we said was vital to keeping the season alive as they take on a Carolina Hurricanes team that is seven and three in its last ten, ten and seven on the season, and uh, has a home record of five and one. Well, apparently you got to learn. I don't know what you're going to learn. I don't know how you're going to learn with a day off, but you got to learn. I think you got to learn that you have sucked thus far, and you have to learn that you can't make big dumb mistakes, and you have to learn that when you have leads, you hold on to them. You have to learn to not let teams back into games when you have control. You have to learn to be more patient. You have to learn to protect the front of your net. You have to learn that sometimes power turns aren't good things to do in front of your own net. What a double power turn. there's chaos. (laughs) I love how you call it power turns. And the the gif, you sped it up too, and it was kind of funny. So I will not be sharing that publicly. That is for our EST group chat. Um, I, I'll, I'll, one more for you, Cass. It comes in uh, via the text line. It says, Tommy and Matt, did you think Spec took it easy on Bouchard? I thought he grilled Ekholm with tougher questions. Cass, I'll, I'll put it to you first. Say that again. I was uh, I was reading the oh, message. Okay, chat. the text says, "Tommy and Matt, did you think Spectre took it easy on Bouchard? I thought he grilled Ekholm with tougher questions." Yeah, maybe. I mean, you're trying. I, I think uh, you know, as someone in the media, you're trying to get a balance of questions. You're not always going to ask yeah. everyone the same ones. Yeah. Like you're trying to get a, a variety of responses, and you're not going to ask every guy the exact same question. Yes. Um, so I, I don't think it was a lack of wanting to grill Evan Bouchard or wanting to grill Matthias Ekholm. It's just you're, you're trying to get different responses, different quotes from different guys with different questions to try to get a, a holistic conversation. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, you know, could could you have asked Bouchard and grilled him more on that for sure? Mm-hmm. And I don't even know uh, who is. You know, also depends on who, what order they they were interviewed in. And I know we put them up where where. You know, you, you, I think you had Ekholm after Bouchard and what we watched, but it, the reality is that could have been flipped sure. in terms of the order, yep. and and you're just trying to get a balance of that. So, uh, I'll say this too: uh, being on the road with the team for eight years, um, you're you're there with them every day, and you kind of have to maintain that the relationship, if you will, especially when yep. you're in close proximity and when when things get hot, uh, you need to know who you're talking to, how their demeanor generally is in these situations. Um, A lot of times it has to do with how veteran a guy is, how they handle uh, tough situations. Ekholm is is one of the best I've ever seen in regard to handling all kinds of questions. Fastballs, softballs, uh, underhand, high and hard. Like, he can handle it all. And uh, he's been around the block for quite a while. And then Bouchard's, you know, more, I don't know, tentative or softer spoken. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it might show on the ice, too. It might sh- it's shocking. It might show on the ice. But that, that I would say to the texter, changes your approach when you're asking those questions. And, man, I remember stretches where they had, like, one win in 21 games, and I'm, I'm like, the only one in there. Sometimes a writer would be off, like, talking to someone else, and you're trying to start the scrum, and you, you'll want to chuck a high, hard one at them, but you know you got three or four games left on this same road trip, and you're on the bus, and you're on the plane with them. You're in the room at the hotel with them, and, uh, you know, you could get cussed out. Sometimes that's part of the job, but you, you just... How you go about it with certain guys varies depending on the guy and how comfortable you are with them. So that's what I would say in regard to that question. That's that's how I see it. I know you got the player's point of view. I'll give it the media point of view. And fair question. And we appreciate it. Cass, 
Yep. Great work tonight, as always, my friend. Great to have you back, and uh, let's do it all over again on Wednesday. Who knows? Maybe we're talking about an Oilers win. Do I feel confident in saying that? Not really, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Well, Tommy, the analytics would say that they're winning the Stanley Cup because of the analytics. Oh, okay. So let's let's be confident in the analytics. Okay, let's do that. We'll do that as a team because there's no I in team, cast, and we do it together. Uh, great stuff tonight, my friend. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. Absolutely, buddy. Look forward that to That is our game analyst, Matt Cassie, and helping us break down the 5-3 Oilers loss at the hands of the Florida Panthers. Hey, YouTube Trev. Have you simmered down over there? What's up, Tommy? You doing all right, pal? Yeah, I'm doing all right. You want to give your assessment of things? Uh, I mean, you guys pretty well said everything. It just, it's so frustrating. Like, I feel for all the nasty chat, everyone chiming in. It it sucks. It's just so depleting uh, time and time again. You know, they're up to, and I'm jumping. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. And Tommy's like, well, they were also up to against Tampa. And uh, surely enough, what do you think? (laughs) What happens, Tommy? Uh, exactly what you expect. And uh, and then they're down. So it's just, it's, it's kind of just ridiculous. And, you know, going to, to Bouchard, what he had to say, we have to be better. Well, like, take some onus. Like, you got to be better. You know, like, it's mm-hmm. it's it's one, yeah, I know you, you guys are a team. But, like, man, it's just, oh, I, I just, I didn't really like what he had to say. Ekholm, I think, nailed it. He's, he's like you said, he's, he's very... He's very wise in his words, and he's, uh, yeah, he's he's a pro for sure. Um, just up and down the lineup, Brown, I'm kind of, I don't even know. Like, it's just, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of over with that. I think uh, a lot of people are. Yeah, like, he's he's not really, not really doing anything. Uh, he, he can't make a pass to Connor, like, McDavid, and I've seen that, like, a few times. He's just, uh, so that's that's frustrating to watch. Yeah, uh, and you know, talking about the puck luck, yeah, like you can't really blame it. You can't really, you, you that's an excuse. But at the same time, man, like that's it, that's not a hockey play. You know, it's just it's just one of those unforeseen things. Like as if Broberg <laughs> trips on a stick, skates back, it goes in the goal, and then you know, Ekholm, just like he said, he tries to clear it, fires it off the back of Zach Hyman, the rear end of. Freaking Zachary Hyman and uh, just another, like, it's just like they're as if. It's like, what are the chances of that? So, yeah, it's frustrating. If any of that doesn't happen, you know, who knows? But, I mean, that's the name of the game. Like, it's that's that's hockey. You're going to get those bounces. The Oilers are going to get those bounces. And it just it wasn't in their favor tonight. So, yeah, it was, it was a tough loss for sure. Uh, day off tomorrow, I don't know what they're going to be doing. It's just... I'll tell you this, Raleigh, North Carolina is not a super fun, sexy, exciting place to be. I can imagine so. Maybe they have time to sulk and think about what they have done in these last two games or Or what they haven't done. Yeah, didn't do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's that's pretty well all my thoughts. Uh, I know some people are saying McLeod looked a little bit better tonight. Yeah, like he, he's always going to be skating, he, and you see him skating so much, uh, but there's not a not a heck of a whole lot going there. Uh, just up and down the line lineup right now. Kane with his discipline, just dumb, just dumb, stupid penalties. Like I, there, there's nothing that irks me more than just taking a just unnecessary penalty. And he didn't do it once; he did it twice. And yeah, he, he scored. That's great. But like, come on, like that's you don't have to. <laughs> just it's silly it's, it's such a silly play uh yeah so uh, i'm happy i was able to kind of just sit back and just gather my thoughts in the last hour uh nasty chat you guys are bringing it tonight so keep it up guys let's see if we can get to 150 if you want to make my night a lot better 150 likes that would certainly do it so it, it was fun it's always fun watching the game with tommy uh you learn a lot so it's it's pretty cool as for the game just don't dwell on it i said it the last one and they start strong, and that's the annoying thing. They mm-hmm. and you know, Knobloch said, like, I'm not mad of, of the effort. The effort's there, and you know, you gotta like that. But it's uh, eventually, it's just, it's gotta, they gotta capitalize on their chances, and they're certainly not doing that right now. So it's pretty well all I got for tonight, Tommy. <laughs> when you ask people to hit the like button, we actually went down one. Ah, oh, <laughs> rats! It. Now it's going up. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was funny. But people in the nasty chat have been texting <laughs> in regard to you. They're saying, 
Uh, Lance says, YouTube Trev is too young for this level of disappointment. VR Montenegro says, YouTube Trev sounds so defeated. Keep a stiff upper left there, kid. Uh, Pat uh, Janix, a.k.a. Piss Jug, <laughs> says, um, oh, where did it go? Uh, Trev is young. Sorry to give you all this at a young age. Uh, yeah, so people, I think they understand. You, you know, you're new here. You're now covering the team. Um, watching you go through this like a fresh bebe, yeah, uh, is is it sucks for you? But I think it's what, entertaining for you, I imagine. Well, to a certain extent, but I don't like suffering and pain for the fan base. And what I was gonna say is, you like a lot of the fan base. I think you, you're kind of echoing yes. the sentiment of of the fan base. So it gives us a little bit of perspective up close, and we appreciate that. So yes, like. Uh, the, v, the VR Montenegros of the world, the Lances of the world, the PJs of the world, keep a stiff upper lip, kid, uh, because it can get worse. It has been worse. I, I and, know that. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Lots of hockey left, but it is not going good. Uh, Sparky G says, steady, Trev, steady. So uh, you got you got some support yeah. from oil country. It uh, goes uh, a long way. A I thing. really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> now, with that being said, you've got work to do. Uh, time to get to the player of the game brought to you by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in the greater Edmonton area. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. It's community driven, understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. So check him out, DamonBunting.com or visit his Instagram page at Damon Bunting Real Estate. I think I know where you're going with this, but YouTube, Trev, it is your honor to bestow us with the player of the game. Yay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so honorable mention, you know, to Captain Connor, obviously two goals, but I feel like he's going to be getting the player of the game lots. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of season left, so I can certainly see him getting that. So he's not getting it tonight. Uh, that's, that's pretty well, that's pretty well all I got for honorable mentions for the Oilers. Uh, but we're, we're going straight to Calvin Picard or Pickard, however mm -hmm. you prefer. Um, look, he, he was okay. Just looking at his numbers right now, goals against average, 416. Yeah, yikes, not great. Uh, save percentage, 871, also not the greatest. But he looked okay. Like, honestly, he didn't look terrible. All the goals that he let in, I was like, ah, are those really on him or is that defense? I like to think it was more so the defense than him. I thought his rebound control was pretty... Pretty good for the majority of the night. He he didn't let any crazy rebounds in or out, I guess. And uh, he he was he looked sound. So Calvin Picard, uh, pretty good story. You know he's uh, he's battled um, for the last few years. He finally got his uh, debut in the blue and orange. Uh, and I thought he did okay. So uh, yeah, Calvin Picard, good for you. You are the Damon Bunting player of the game. Is that is that who you were thinking? I was gonna say. Oh, I thought it would be McDavid, but yeah, yeah, that works with the uh, Player of the Game Award bestowed upon him by one YouTube Trev. Okay, let's wrap up with a few texts here. Uh, Simon texting in saying, can we stop saying how unlucky we were? Florida was way more aggressive and tenacious. We looked completely flat on offense and defense. Simon, I cannot disagree with you there. Um, the puck luck thing came up in the Chris Knobloch scrum. So that's kind of why we were discussing it and trying to gauge how much of it we believed. Uh, this text from Matt says, Hey, Tommy, what do you think about adding a segment where we can rate the offense, defense, and goaltending each game? Could add this to the website, make it an interactive segment with the listeners. Yeah, we could do that, Matt. That's definitely something. Maybe get a sponsor on board, or throw special teams in there, turn it into its own video. That is definitely something we could look at throwing a poll. YouTube Trev says, yeah, so you already, what Matt's laying down, you can kind of see the structure and in a bit of a vision. Yeah, I'm already, already visualizing it. Uh, that would be that would be cool. It's always yeah. it's always nice to keep the, the viewers engaged, and yeah. uh, we try to do that as much as possible. So Matt, doing something like that? That might be a great idea. Yeah, not a bad idea at all. All right, I like that. We'll, we'll discuss. We have a meeting this Wednesday. Yes, we do. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Uh, this text says, Tommy, the orders were at their best when you had your perm. Be a bro and do it for the boys. Bring it back. That's from Lance. Uh, Lance, they're pretty good when I didn't have a perm, too. I will uh, say that. Uh, all right. That's going to do it for the Oil Stream post game show. The Oilers lose their second in a row. They're 0 2 on this Eastern Conference road trip. It continues Wednesday night in Carolina. We are live on location at the Kingsway Boston Pizza. 
looking forward to that one. So if you want to watch with some pals, get some good deals. Uh, there might be some giveaways as well. We had Molson giving away a Heritage Classic jersey the last time we did it last month. It was a great night. We packed up the, uh, the lounge at the BP Capilano. So uh, the boys will be there. YouTube, Trev, I think you're going to make an appearance. Of course, That's yes. your old stomping grounds. Yes, old stomping grounds for yeah. sure. So definitely be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of great stories. So, you know, that was my first first experience in Edmonton. All my memories pretty well were at Kingsway Boston Pizza. So yeah. had a lot of a lot of fun there. Guys, definitely show up. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we, we cannot wait. And we would be very, very thankful if you did show up. So, yes, yes. be there. Absolutely. So 3.30, we get going with the pregame show live from... Boston Pizza, Kingsway on Wednesday afternoon. Of course, we'll be there for the post game as well. Uh, join us, won't you? Because it should be a fun time. Win or lose, we might still booze. <laughs> now you're you're laughing. You're in a better mood now after that one. Uh, to everyone who tuned in on the audio stream, thank you so much. Uh, to those listening via the TuneIn app, we appreciate that. And to those who watch tonight, on our EST YouTube channel. Thank you for watching our show. You know we appreciate it very, very much. And uh, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel already, please do. We are on the march to 6,000 subscriptions, which is fantastic as we continue to build Edmonton Sports Talk up, making it the premier sports destination in the Edmonton area and beyond. And beyond, hopefully, uh, for YouTube, Trev and Matt Cassian. I'm Tom Gazzola saying thank you for watching and listening. Have yourselves a lovely evening. We will talk to you tomorrow right here on Edmonton Sports Talk.